weapons that we are looking at here, we are not doing an audit query interrogation. Chair, we are auditing. That's, that's the meeting we are having here. And the chair, I think that you should pronounce yourself and the, the, past, the legal person can be able to read for me section 62 of the Public Audits Act. What does it say? If you allow me. Yeah. What, legal, please proceed. Chair, section 62 of the Public Audit Act provides for offenses. Any person, a person shall not without reasonable cause or lawful excuse, obstruct, hinder, assault, or threaten a member of staff of the audit, Auditor General, B, without justification, fail to provide information required under this Act, C, without justification, fail to provide information within reasonable time that is required under this Act, D, submit false or misleading information, E, misrepresent to or knowingly mislead a member of staff of the Auditor General, F, interfere with or exert undue influence of any staff of the Office of the Auditor General, 2, a person who contravenes subsection 1 commits an offence and is liable on conviction to a fine no exceeding 5 million shillings or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 3 years or to both. So Chair, this is my pronoun. Because I, I, I really, really am tired of this kind of engagement in this committee. The first process that we must clear is that the documents that we are seeing here that are responding to these queries, were they provided for at the time of audit? Were they provided for at the time that the certificate was issued? No. So then as a committee, to be serious, we must pronounce ourselves that was there reasonable reason that made them not to be availed and was that communicated to the auditors if there isn't we must pronounce ourselves to article to that to that particular section of the law and then the second question would be when they are provided for which the auditors to be honest the auditor general was very clear here and we gave it is this committee that the auditor general direction here i sat here for three hours and we said if you're going to receive documents after a certificate has been issued, there is no provision of that under the law. And you cannot hold the auditors liable for that. You punish and you call it a day. Because, Chair, I, I will not come to meetings where I come and start auditing a report. This is audit we are doing here. It's not a scrutiny of the audit queries. So I, 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 I hold the view that any document that came after the issue of certificate should not even be reviewed. Shouldn't. The law is very clear. This certificate was raised in 2021 and closed. You take the auditor to another audit process on August 2024. Chair, what are we doing? Uh, you, you know, uh, this matter is not a new matter, honorable members. We have handled this matter of late submission of documents. And uh, I want to agree with you. Where there is a fair and valid explanation as to why the documents were not provided during the audit, the committee uh, will consider that particular case. But where there is no fair and valid explanation on why the documents were not provided, then the committee cannot start redoing the audit. They will simply make a recommendation on that. Uh, Governor, in his uh, response, he stated that the documents were uh, later on found with the contractor found with the contractor which means they were not there with the county government they were later on found with the contractor uh, so that is the first challenge that the documents were not there number two 
uh, honorable members, this is the very first time this Senate, through this committee, is uh, looking at municipalities. We have not been looking at the municipality since 2014, when uh, devolution started. The same matter also with the water companies.